When I started painting in oils, I wanted to understand more about the pigments that go into paint so I could narrow down my own personal color palette, rather than just what certain teachers had advised me to use or what colors look good in the store. And one of the most useful things I learned is the difference between mineral and modern paint colors. Mineral colors are made of inorganic pigments from earth, like yellow ochre or burnt sienna, or from metals like cadmiums and cobalts, which are also the most toxic pigments on our modern palette. But modern colors come from modern organic pigments that have a carbon-based structure and are the hardest to spell, like quinacridone dioxinine or thalocyanine. It can be eye-opening to pay attention to this difference. Mineral and modern colors behave so differently, it's useful to know which one you're using so you can decide based on your artistic intention. You'll be able to predict how colors mix together and control the style that you want to achieve with your paints. So a mineral color, like this Prussian blue, will gray down or lose chroma when you mix it with white. Adding white to any mineral color will change both the value and the chroma. But this isn't the case when it comes to modern colors like this thalo blue. Adding white to a modern color changes its value only, not the chroma. So this thalo blue retains its intensity and its tint. This means that modern colors are the best for high key, highly chromatic color mixing where you want to push the color space as wide as possible so that you can mix as bright and clean mixes as you can. They're likely the right choice for abstract painters or painters who use color to create emotion or vibrancy in their work. But there's still an advantage to mineral colors like Prussian blue for realist painters because mineral colors better echo the behavior of natural light. The colors we see in real life are often more grayed down or less chromatic than the bright colors that come straight out of the tube. The same difference between the two type of pigments is also evident when adding two colors together. In this example, I combined two mineral colors, Prussian blue and cadmium lemon, as well as two modern colors, thalo blue and Hansi yellow light. You can see as they mix together, the two mineral colors are slightly less chromatic and vibrant than the two modern colors. Modern colors exist in all the main hue families, so they're a great choice if you really want that bold, high-key color palette. They're the most recent pigments invented, and they're often used to come the closest to primary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow, although there are no perfect primary paint colors. They're also great glazing colors because they tend to be more transparent, though their transparency is not for everyone. Because of their intensity or transparency, you'll often see them in convenience mixes as well. In fact, many paint colors named cyan are actually mixes of thalo blue and white. So some example of mineral colors would be cadmiums like cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow deep, cadmium orange, cadmium red as well as alizarin crimson, which is still often used and for some reason put in a lot of paint sets, but it is an incredibly fugitive pigment, which means it's not as long lasting and will fade much easier in light than other colors. You'll also have cobalt violet and blue, as well as ultramarine blue, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, and viridian. You'll also find a lot of your staple earth colors like raw sienna, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, naples yellow, as well as Venetian red or earth green. You can see that a lot of these mineral colors are still very popular in portrait or landscape palettes. And some popular modern colors are Hansa yellow, either light, medium, or deep, India red or naphthol red, Perlin red, as well as most permanent alizarin crimsons, and also the quinacridones, such as quinacridone red, violet, or magenta, which tend to come the closest to primary magenta dioxinine purple, as well as the thalos, where they range from blues and greens. Also, some paint companies' chromatic blacks will be made using these modern colors, so you just have to check the paint tube label for the pigments inside. Another thing you'll notice is when the pigments are divided up, for example, with cadmium red, you often find cadmium red light, medium, or deep. Mineral colors like this will often divide into light, medium, and deep in the same way. For example, even yellow ochre can be yellow ochre, light, or deep. However, modern colors like thalo blue tend to divide into color temperature. For example, you can get thalo blue red shade or green shade based on whether it leans warm or cool. 
The most typical phthalo blue tends to be green shade and tends to lean cool, so that's something to pay attention to on the paint tube labels in the pigment codes, where it will let you know whether it is the warm or cool version. I know I prefer to use phthalo blue red shade. I find it a little bit more neutral and it mixes easier into my other palette of colors. Basically, this is just another way to tell if you have a modern or mineral color, another way that these two types of pigments are different. I use a range of modern and mineral colors on my palette, but by learning the difference in how they act in color mixing, it's meant that I'm able to use my palette a lot more effectively and use the right colors for the right purpose.